This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. To throw, it's Rodgers. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Touchdown! Alan Lazard, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jets go up by two touchdowns. Another impressive drive, so they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. since the offense about ready to go here on their next drive and they're in a bind early here down 14 nothing are you worried at this stage or still too early you're worried you're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team you want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time you're wondering how are we going to move the football what do we have on this play sheet that can work get back to basics is usually your answer and make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Here we go. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Burrow will throw. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. now burrow on first down being chased out left and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage he'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running so it'll leave him with second and a yard i do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit we decided not to throw it on first down but give them credit they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage but it's only second and short so that run is still likely to lead to a new Here set of downs Second down and a little more than a yard here. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. 
Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Jets are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Well, when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. Uh, what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing them to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just not supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. Now a give right side Swift down inside the 40. The Jets are the perfect 4-0 to start the campaign. And they've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Rodgers now to throw. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he's taken down inside the 30. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. On play action, now Rodgers. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Second and ten. From the gun, it's Rodgers. And that is incomplete. Nicole Hardman, the intended target. And that'll make it third down. Right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Rodgers again now. This is Lazard with a catch out left. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now Kaimi Fairbairn for the field goal try. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let him put some points on the board. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Here we go, here we go. The Bengals drive about to get going. 
And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. Well, no, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called the I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. From the gun to give to Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a bango got going a little early there. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. 11 MP, hey. 11 MP. Burrow looking to pass. That's taken in by Higgins. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. 11 MT, 11 MT. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. This is caught, it's Cooks. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Brandon Cooks, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. And he'll elect not to run with it. The fair catch will move this out to the 25-yard line. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Once again, it's Swift. And he's got Rome. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 126 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Well, he's broken off some big-time runs here in this first half. Yeah, and let's just face it. When you go into a game, you think you've got the plays that are going to work, but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen, your confidence rises, and he's running with terrific ability right now.
On the handoff, this is Swift. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Now a second and ten. From midfield, here's Rodgers. He'll get this off to Swift. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That's a good job there by the corner. And we do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Here's third and seven. On the option to give to Swift here. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. This is caught. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Swift. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Rodgers changing the play, it appears. Rodgers with a keeper, and he is over the line for another rushing touchdown. Is he a quarterback or is he a tailback? Aaron Rodgers, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Jets will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. 
I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. And now they'll shift things around. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Crossing route complete. Catch made by Cooks. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. And now he's really knocking on the door for 700. That is career catch 699. On one, ready? Now Burrow on first down. There again is Cooks complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A good pickup, but it will come on what should be the final play in this first half. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. Welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. And the Jets set to receive this third quarter kickoff, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in the second half. And the fair catch signaled for and taken, so they'll begin this third quarter from their 25-yard line. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. He's got it with the 15. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Big yardage that time for the Jets. 48 yards. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run right here with Swift. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. The defense showing some anger after giving up the big play. This time they'll lose one or two. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Now Rodgers, a free play. He'll find Lazard here over the middle. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. And 
And now they face a second and six after the penalty. Here's a handoff to Swift. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. This defense against the run, by the way, they're not top five, but they are top ten. So what's your philosophy here? Do you try and run the ball against a team that's pretty good against the run? What if you're a pretty good running team? If so, you might want to go ahead and run it anyway because that's your strength. Here is third and five. To throw is Rodgers. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. Touchdown, Jets! DeAndre Swift. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Jets take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead is now 24. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. And we all know how talented this guy is who's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. Now it's Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that second down they know that old expression it's not my night it hasn't been his so far I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage but it's been a tough go for him and every time he looks up somebody's there defensively that was the same case on that play on second down Burrow That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one good for 26 and a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. It's Mixon on the counter. And some strong running. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 51 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Here we go. Back to Mixon on first down. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Here we go. This second and four. Here's Burrow. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. John Franklin Myers, the one in there to drop him. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. 11, 11, 11. 11, Thomas. 11, mighty. 11, mighty. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here go, here Here's go. one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. This goes out wide for Mixon. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four yard line. So there the defense denies the rookie of his potential first career touchdown. And his first NFL touchdown celebration. I wonder if he's thought about it, if he has something cooked up in his head as he worked on with his team. And think about the celebration back home when he finally scores his first touchdown. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. We'll see oh, what he does. Well said, sir. Well said. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Bengals are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. So a very important first drive of the third quarter, Charles, and safe to say, a much-needed touchdown. Which leads to the question, where was this in the first half? Because if they'd had a few more drives like that, they wouldn't be in this situation. But that is the kind of drive that sends a message to the other side. We're going to be here, and we're going to battle you to the end. And he's going to get in for the score. And the lead now cut to 14. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And some room to run now. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Jet first down. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
So from the 36 now, first and 10. This is Swift on the counter, and he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and 10. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action, but other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. The Jets on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing is Rodgers. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. And now that brings up fourth down there. A loss of six yards on the sack. Here's the Jets punter now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five, and the Bengals will take over here first and ten. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Complete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Burrow. Pressure comes and down he goes. They'll wind up losing ten on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Flush to his right. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could, but let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. It certainly did. Yeah, he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage, and he did, but not enough. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it.
They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Jets are going to get the football here in great field position. First and ten, it's Swift. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't, because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it, because once everyone's emotions come down, Hard to start him up again, so I think he may want to keep him cranking high right here. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with, and throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They fake the give. Now Rodgers. Right side caught by Jackson. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Well, they certainly spread the ball around so far, but they're definitely getting everyone involved now when you're throwing it to the fullback. Just shows how versatile this offense is and how everyone is a threat. Second and three from the nine. Throwing now is Rodgers. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So here's a third and 14. Now it's Rodgers. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Touchdown! DeAndre Swift from 19 yards away. And the Jets are well on their way to a 5-0 start as they extend their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 23. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. On one, ready? The Bengals drive about to get going. And their four-game win streak very much in jeopardy as they go to work here late with a first and 10. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. I think if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here we go, here we go. Here's second and seven now from the 28. 11, Thomas. Here we go, here we go. Get in the huddle. Behind. Burrow will throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. 
The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. That is caught, powering his way forward. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. That's going to be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. Brandon Cooks with his second touchdown of the night. And the Bengals are able to cut into that deficit. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three-score game. It's complete. This is caught. Was he in? Yes. Two points. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that if someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. Fair catch going to be taken, and this will be moved out to the 25. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. They'll begin on the ground here with a Banacanda. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. And they'll go again with a band of Kanda. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a play fake. Rodgers. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Jordan Battle. And the Bengals are right back in this football game. This is first and 10. Burrow looking to pass to Mixon on the check down. 
And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Time not on their side. They've got one timeout. The two-minute warning to work with as well. But they need points. First and ten. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Second and 10 now, Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. What a way to wrap up the week. Now a big play, it's third down. To throw Burrow. He's going to air one out. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. So just under two minutes to play, and this would figure to pretty much be your ball game right here. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So just under two minutes to play, and this would figure to pretty much be your ball game right here. And this one travels out of bounds, so unsuccessful there on the onside kick try. football here as they run on first down. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down and six now. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go.
Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. This is Wilson on the jet sweep. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. Here's the Jets punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Here we go, here we go. Here's first and ten. their comeback plans it is intercepted and he brings this one back it's a pick six and a jet touchdown but Charles you can just see the frustration on the sideline safe to say that's not how they expected this series to go the ball only went one way and it was backward into their own end zone courtesy of the pick six and Brandon how often do we hear offenses tell us before a game they want to end every series with a kick right a punt a PAT or a field goal in the case of a defense, they wanted to end with a punt or a takeaway. And we saw the takeaway right there, and it turned out to be a takeaway that turned into six points. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And this will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Final shot now for Burrow. Steps away to his left. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one certainly was and I think both sides compete against each other all the time you go to each other in practice obviously your training camps your off season but on game day you both want to show your best and I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense a complete team victory so for the Jets they improved to 5-0 now 